This is the Teachable Soul Podcast. Because we cannot possibly live long enough to make all the mistakes ourselves, let's take a few moments to learn from the mistakes of others. The Teachable Soul Podcast, where guests and listeners like you share stories of failure and teachable moments on the journey to success. Here's your host, Kat Daniels. Welcome to the Teachable Soul Podcast. I would like to introduce John Newport, who is a pickup artist turned law enforcement officer turned podcaster. When John couldn't find a book on meeting someone, specifically a love interest, he did what anyone would do. He found something that worked and worked fast. But what he didn't realize was in learning to pick up women, he was actually learning to manipulate them. It's something he didn't find out until after he had left a wave of destruction behind him. And he now teaches others how to find someone with integrity and authenticity. Welcome, John. Uh, Thank you for having me on. This is great. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us today. So if you want to just kind of start by telling us your story and like where you originally started with trying to be a pickup artist or or even what that is or what that means. Oh, that goes way back. It was actually in the early 90s. I was in the Marines at the time and I was stationed in El Toro at Mm. the air station. and. It was really just an online community of people, and we were exchanging ideas on how to meet people until I found that there was an actual group in Los Angeles. So I went up there, and it was a large group of guys very scientifically learning what works with women and what doesn't. And I started learning it. Uh, different techniques, different ways to approach, different ways to walk, talk, interact, just the entire gambit of it. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until uh, it was one of the girls that I was going out with. Her name was Tracy. We had broken up and I ran back into her and I very, I just walked up and I started talking to her a little bit. And I was like, so why did we break up? And she she gave it to me extremely bluntly and it crushed me for a good six, seven months. And I started trying to reconnect with everybody that I'd gone out with. And they pretty much told me the same thing that they felt used. Um, The the relationship had no substance. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was more like they were arm candy to Mm -hmm. me. And I was like, okay, I, this, this isn't working. And I'd been doing this for over a year. Mm -hmm. And after that, I was, that's not what I wanted. I wanted, I wanted a relationship of substance, somebody that I, that understood me, somebody that I understood. And really it was, it it was just, it just blew my mind, tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. And what really gets me today is a lot of guys, and it's not just the pickup artist community. It's also, I call them the relationship, relationship coaches, mm-hmm. not all of them, but very, a lot of them don't know what they're doing. They're in it for the money. They're not in it to actually help somebody. Right. And the advice that they're giving out is terrible. Mm. So you originally went into that thinking that you were going to learn these things so that you could have a functioning relationship with a woman, not because... Mm-hmm you just wanted to have arm candy like just because you wanted to date around. You actually went into it for a relationship and came out the other side, finding that you couldn't have it in that way. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of the originals out there, Eric von Markovic and uh, Neil Strauss, even they found later on that there was a problem with what they were teaching. Right. So they changed what they were teaching. Uh, They those guys, they do have ethics about them, but there are people out there teaching this and they have no ethics. Um, mm. Pretty much, it's a notch on the post, so yeah. to speak. <laughs> so it's, that's not really what they wanted, mm-hmm. but it was, they were using the information that they had gotten and it, the information that they had gotten came from another guy. He was the very first to introduce this as a system for meeting people. But he he studied uh, neuro linguistic programming, and all you have to do is look at that last word, and you can see where the manipulation comes in. Right. 
So you had spoke, how did you reconnect with all the people that you had dated? Like what, what made you kind of seek them out for that information? Well, every person is different and every relationship ends for a different reason. Right. So I didn't, and again, it goes back to that whole pickup artist mentality is, okay, if that's what this one person says, is it true with other people? So what I I just went into, now back then there was no real internet. Um, we're talking dial up uh, AOL type stuff. Right. So I pretty much went back to my little black book and just went to their houses. And it was, it was not easy to do. I mean, you're talking about knees knocking butterflies, hoping you're not going to get slapped. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I went back and I, I was just like, look, I'm, I'm here. I, I just have a question for you. Mm-hmm. And most of them, it, I was still on friendly terms with them, luckily enough. Mm-hmm. But I didn't realize that there were deeper seated issues there. Right. Of course. So, and especially when you're dating somebody and they've come out of a bad relationship and you artificially identify with that. Yeah. And then use that as the, the doorway to get into it mm-hmm. and it's it, yeah that's not that's not building authenticity that's not uh, that's not coming to somebody with an air of integrity about you yeah yeah for sure so that is a to to walk up to someone's doorstep though and say hey why how did you feel when <laughs> That's, uh, uh, no, well, no, it, it didn't really uh, go off like that. It's more of you walk up, you knock on the door, and of course they're going to be surprised to see me there because I probably haven't seen them in several months. Right. But they're wondering why I'm there, so they're usually the first ones to ask why I'm there. So in the pickup jargon, that would be the opener. So I, what are you doing here? I just, I just have a question. If you wouldn't mind, could we just talk for about the next 15 minutes? And most of them were very receptive to, to it. But some of them, no, they didn't want to have anything to do with me. But for those that I was able to ask, and even today, um, Ash, Ashley, my co-host, she makes fun of it because when I, when I decide to break up with somebody, I ask them. And I do like a full analysis of our entire relationship. What can I do better? <laughs> How can I get better? What... Uh, what is, what did you find annoying about me? Mm. And it sounds very strange to people who don't do it, but if I don't know what I'm doing wrong, I can't fix it. Right. And that's a hard conversation for both parties to have. I mean, I um, I, it's, for me, it's rather normal. I've just been doing it so long. Uh, now for somebody who's never done it. Yes. It's very weird. <laughs> that Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> right. <laughs> But most most of the girls that I go out with uh, today, they are very they are very receptive to it, and they they're asking me back the same question. Well, mm-hmm. what what about me? Did you not really care for? Mm-hmm. You kind of leave a wave of destruction behind you. You come in the front door, and by the time you hit the kitchen, it looks like a tornado hit the place. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's. I mean, that that to to have those conversations and to ask those questions and, and then be receptive, receptive of them when you get the answer um, and actually take them in takes a whole lot of self-awareness though. Yes. Yeah, it does. And I've been doing this for, if I go all the way back to my very first pickup artist class, Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for about 30 years and I've just now like come out and actually said, yes, this is what I've, this is what I've learned. This is what I've done. If you're looking for an authentic type, if you're looking for an authentic relationship and you just can't find it, here's how you can do it. But you have, it takes a lot of internal work. It's not some, you can't go in like we did and just kind of learn a little bit here, a little bit there and go off into the wild. Right. You're going to, it's, you're going to end up manipulating people and it's, it's not healthy. It's not something you want to do. Yeah. So I don't want to stereotype or theorize or whatever, but I think that a lot of when people are, are seeking, I mean, 
I feel like in order to go to a pickup artist community, in order to learn what you think is going to help you find a relationship, I feel like that's a little bit of desperation. Creepy. No, <laughs> I don't even think it's crazy. I just think it's a little bit of desperation. Like if you're if you're so desperate to find someone to love you at that point, that you would go to this group who you think is going to teach you how to find someone to love you because yeah. you think that you just can't. Like, but, yeah, and I understand what you're saying. It's it is one for myself. It wasn't that I was that I was desperate. It was that. Prior to the Marine Corps and everything else, I was a photographer. So I was, I was very easily able to meet women and have relationships with them because of the camera. The, my camera was the prop. Mm. So I would be able to go out on modeling shoots. I'd be able to uh, take photos of models. I'd be able to interact and talk with them mm. during the modeling session. And if it worked out, I could ask them out for dinner or coffee or something later on, and they'd have no problem with it. But I was coming from an authentic place. Once I got out of doing modeling and put the camera down, now I couldn't, now I was having problems meeting people because I didn't have my crutch with me. Mm -hmm. And for people who are extremely busy and for introverts, uh, we call them wallflowers. You, you go to the club, they go to the club to meet people and they wind up standing against the wall or in the back corner wanting and hoping that somebody's going to come up and talk to them. Yeah. What they find is that they are just unapproachable. They don't look like they want to interact with anybody, so everybody leaves them alone. Right. And also for myself, meeting the type of person that I wanted to meet, the a little bit more refined, looking for long term. They had goals and they had a trajectory for their life. And somebody who was, instead of somebody stumbling through their life, it was very difficult. So I just need to find out what I was doing wrong. And that's what this group offered me. I see. So you actually kind of started from a place where, so you've actually, you have a record of like trying to figure out what you're doing wrong so that you can be better. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you can call it like the old fashioned way of online dating. People are having problems meeting and interacting with other people. So they turn to online dating. It's a lot easier. Click mm -hmm. on it, send them a message, find out, okay, they're messaging me back. Cool. We're off to the races. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a lot different when you start going out to meet somebody and then it's just hit and miss. Uh, okay, this person didn't work. Uh, okay, I spent four months with this person and I'm back to square one again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and that's, that's what a lot of, that's what the pickup artist and the current pickup artist community offers. I mean, even relationship coaches and matchmakers and whatever title they want to give themselves. That's what they're offering. We can help you find love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, st I still, so you want to find love. And so you go out and you find the best way to do this. Mm -hmm. Are are there men within like that group that you came across that were coming at it from a different angle even than you were? Some, some of them, yes. Uh, a lot of them, they were, uh, for the lack of a better phrase, they were trying to make up for lost time. Mm -hmm. And it's it's expanded. I mean, there are, there are now pickup artist groups specifically for women. Mm -hmm. and, but there's a difference between men and women. Uh, what I have found is that most men are initially in, into it just for the sex. Women, ah, there's a few of them that are in for that. Most of them, they're in, they are looking for a relationship, not, some, uh, not something one night couple weeks type thing they're they're looking for relationships men are on the up, opposite side of it and mm -hmm. it, you have to go in and change that mentality and find out what is it you're really looking for and stop tricking people all right be if you it's more popular today to play the real card than to mm -hmm. try and bluff your way through Right. People want real. They want authentic. And mm -hmm. 
when you approach it from that point of view, you're a lot more successful at meeting the person you want to actually meet. Right. Yeah. And I think that that's why. So like one of the things I always, you know, will tell my single friends now, I'm like, if you want to meet somebody, I mean, you can always do online dating. That's a possibility, of course, now that we live in this day and age. But like, if you really want to meet somebody that is going to jive well with you, if you will, and be in a relationship, then you're, you're going to have to do things by yourself first that you enjoy doing so that you can go out and meet those people who also enjoy doing the things that you enjoy doing. But, you know, doing the, the self work or just even figuring out how to be alone first um, is a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> it is. Even my co-host, uh, she's, we're both going through, we keep going through the same, through the exact work that I went through back then. Mm-hmm. But I've, I've pulled some stuff out because I know, and the pickup artist community or the so-called love community has also realized that it doesn't work. At least those with ethics. Do. Right. I mean, yeah. Uh, we don't, if people come to us and they want help, uh, if we find out that they're in it, in it for the wrong reasons, we will kick them out. But, right. I mean, there is no if, answer, but questions. I've got no problem getting inside somebody's face. But if, if they're coming at it and they're looking for that long term, we're going to be 87 years old, sitting on rockers, watching our grandkids play type relationship. Mm-hmm. That's what we try to help people discover. But you do have to, like you said, you, they, you do have to be comfortable being alone and having your own life and loving yourself. If you can't yeah, love yourself so. first. How is anybody else going to love you? Right. Which we say all the time. Like even I didn't understand, you know, when I was younger, like what that really means. Like, how can you love yourself? Like, of course you love yourself. You don't want to, you know, die and that's loving yourself, but that's not the case. Well, it's being comfortable with your own scars. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's people, they have a self-esteem issue Mm -hmm. and it could be something very small. Uh, They could have a scar on their uh, like a physical scar on their back or they've had a very bad relationship in the past. So they have this defense mechanism that anybody that shows interest in them, that defense mechanism goes up and that person is instantly friend zoned and they don't realize they're doing it. They're, it's, self, it's like self-sabotage. Right, exactly. But a person that has learned those techniques would see that and still be able to draw them in their guard goes down. They enter into the relationship. That person gets what they want and then they're discarded. Mm -hmm. And now they've got double the amount of issues that they have to work with. That person just destroyed their life. Yeah. And yeah, you can't go forth in a relationship like that. (laughs) No, it turns into a very unhealthy relationship and people will stay with that relationship because they don't want to go through all that again. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like they settled and they've just made a life choice to stay with this person for the next six, seven, 20 years and still remain unhappy. Right. Well, and sometimes too, I found it can be because they're, they're kind of comfortable in their little bit of chaos. You know what I mean? Yeah. That it's when you grow up in a household of chaos, then you kind of wind up in the same relationships and then you wind up in the same what you know is uncomfortable technically, but it's comfortable to you because you're used to it anyway. Right. So comfortability and, and that's where I think trying to get out of your, your comfort zone can be taken in a different way because yeah, sometimes your comfort yeah. zone isn't exactly just comfortable. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's comfortable because you, you know what the limits are. Mm-hmm. So you, you know what to expect. Yeah. You know what to expect and you can kind of control the amount of chaos but being able to step out of that comfort zone and discover something new, it's, it can actually be very empowering. Mm-hmm. And that's what we try to get across to a lot of the people that we, that we run across, the people that we're trying to help, is sometimes it could be very simple, just change your outfit. <laughs> okay, You constantly wear solids, try prints. Yeah. And, but what are people going to say? Who cares? <laughs> most of them don't know. <laughs> most of them are going to look at you and keep right on going about their life anyways. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's definitely, <laughs> it's somewhat, 
at first when you think about, oh, well, all these people that you think think something about you don't even think about you at all. It might sound a little sad, but when you actually experience it, it's actually kind of free. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh. I mean, go, yeah. Go, go to the beach or go to the downtown area, go into a mall. Mm-hmm. Look at how many people just kind of glance your way and just keep on walking. Yeah. I mean, they, most of which probably even are praying that you do not talk to them or look at them either. Yeah. The same thing is going through their head. Yeah, but. <laughs> exactly. So in doing a little bit of research for this, I, I, I always knew that there was a pickup artist community, but mm-hmm. I had looked into it um, because it, I didn't think it was anything that had applied to me or would apply to me. But I did a little bit of research and I actually stumbled upon, I don't know what community it was, but it was, it was a little bit scary, honestly. <laughs> It, it is. It, I'm going to be honest with you. It is. Yeah. And so I, the part of the reason that I actually wanted to do this with you is because I have a friend um, who was reading a book that he now just swears by. And I got like a paragraph <laughs> oh. into the book and I was like, this should be burned. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this cannot yeah. possibly and, be distributed. This is horrible. And, and that's just one of the millions. Yeah. And unfortunately, it, a lot of it comes from people who went to like one or two courses, figured they had it all f- figured out, started their own school, mm-hmm. wrote their own book in order to boost their own whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And now people, they swear by this stuff and it's, oh, it's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And it's no. I mean, yeah. Just no. Stop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, I did um, a little bit of research on the author of the book um, because I was like, how can this guy possibly think that this is actually okay? Like, there's no way. Like, he has to know what he's doing, right? And so I did a little bit of research and it's actually, I came to find out after reading a lot about him, it's, he, he, he believes the way that he does because he actually has no intention ever of marrying anyone. And even like doing delving further into it, I read some of the things that people had written who follow this type of thing and they're very angry and like aggressive. Yes. I was like, why, why are they so angry? (laughs) Yeah. And a lot of them, unfortunately comes from the incel community, the involuntarily celibates. Now that, that entire thing is, it still boggles my mind because it was actually a girl that came up with that, but the guys hijacked it. And they believe that the reason they aren't in a relationship or they are not having sex is because of the women. Right. And, I mean, uh, excuse me, who said they owe you anything? Right? Exactly. I mean, if you're involuntarily celibate, there's probably an issue with you, yeah. not them. Right. Yeah. Everybody in the whole world or every woman in the whole world cannot possibly be the problem and you're not. Exactly. And yeah. that's, that's why I keep going back and asking, what is it that I am doing? What can I change about myself to make myself more marriage material? Mm-hmm. That's and, uh, very interesting that you kind of went into it with that well, this must be, this might be something that I can change within myself. And then you came out of it like, oh, I need to change some stuff about myself still. <laughs> yeah. That was not and, cool at all. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm not sure if you'd looked at our website, but I have 14 traits that I look for. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking for a specific type of woman that I can go out with who holds as many of those traits as possible. Mm-hmm. Now, if they only have five or six, then... Yeah, we could we can go out for a while, but I let them know it's it's really not going to. I really don't see us in a long term relationship. But if we want, if you want to hang out, I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's that's perfectly fine with them. Sometimes they're like, "Well, what is about me? You're just a little bit closed off. Mm-hmm. If you could open up a little bit more, I think there's a guy out there for you. It's mm-hmm. just not me, right?" So being honest with somebody, oh, wow, what a concept. Let's be honest with each other, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd think that that would be like your knee-jerk reaction, but it's honesty is, is, can be scary sometimes. Oh, yeah, it can, it can be scary. And let me tell you, it took me a long time to get to this point. <laughs> so, yeah, I bet. 
Yeah. But that's great. I'm super glad that you are able to be yeah. active and, and learn about yourself and realize, you know, that there are things and not, not take it so personally when you realize that there are things that you can change within yourself, you know, to make your own life a better place, basically. Yeah. So uh, what, what did you find out? What kind of questions did you have over that community? I do. <sighs> I don't really have questions about that community. Oh, it, okay. <laughs> I, th- I, I you can't. Um, <laughs> it's just so scary. I can't. I have, I know men who I blame a lot of their issues on their insecurities that they don't really realize or are not willing to acknowledge that they even have that I think would probably follow those communities and love them initially. But I just, you cannot possibly like those things cannot possibly be okay. You have to treat women as human beings. And I really don't think that anything in that community is trying to treat a woman as a human being. It's a, treating them as another, um, another being basically <laughs> that is. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a trophy. It's a race and you came out and. And it's a game. It, it's a game. Yeah. I mean, now there is, I, I, there is still some of that stuff that I identify with. Yeah. Just just for full disclosure. No, yeah. Uh dating is like a game mm-hmm. that two people play. Mm-hmm. But they twisted it or at least the current community has twisted it. Right. And instead of two consensual people having fun with each other and just discovering more about the other person, they twisted it as into this okay, if you find this out, do this. And it doesn't matter what she wants or what (laughs) he wants. You will win. You'll come out on top. You will get what you want. That's not okay. That, that to me is uh, the easiest way for me to put this, at least in my thought process, it's almost like legalized rape. Right. And that's not okay. No, yeah, because you're making them think basically that the woman wants whatever you tell them they want type deal. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. or they're going to fall for it and they're not going to realize exactly what is taking place. Right. Because you are using manipulation tactics. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of these people are uh, are teaching. Unfortunately, the good ones, the ones that actually have ethics, the ones that really do want to help people they're extremely hard to find and mm-hmm. they're going out of business because they just don't have the funds that these larger pickup artists groups and companies. I mean, this is like an entire industry. That's what these people are teaching mm-hmm. and they just, they just can't compete. That's, and I've just had personally, I've just had enough of it. That's why I've started doing this. That's why we started our show mm-hmm. and look, you can do this stuff. Mm-hmm. correctly and we've stripped out all the manipulation stuff i mean mm-hmm. it, it starts with your own self it's, it starts with you yeah dealing with what you want identifying what you want what kind of relationship do you want and i mean if you want something short term find somebody who also wants something short term if you want something long term find somebody that wants something long term right. now you aren't going through 8 9 10 people to find the one that wants something long term, mm-hmm. uh, make sure your goals are matching up. Both of you want the same thing, right? So you mentioned, and and this is something that that my friend that I was talking about and I have discussed. So um, in this community, and and something that you mentioned is that kind of like dating is a game. Do you is that one of the things that you still? Like it- uh, to a to a very certain degree, um, I usually use, I use that term because it it's able to get the idea across. But it's it is kind of a game because the guy wants to talk to the girl, the girl wants to talk to the guy, so she's looking at him, hoping he's going to make the approach. The guy is looking at the girl, hoping that she's going to give him some kind of invitation signal. Hey, it's okay to talk to me. Right. So it that's kind of like the game there. And then once they start talking, they're both interested. Um, 
actually let's kick it up a, just a little bit. She wants him to kiss her. He wants to kiss her. He's not sure. He doesn't want to mess it up. Mm-hmm. She's like, is he serious about me? So mm-hmm. you have this whole interaction going back and forth. Both, both people are hinting at what they want, but the other person isn't getting it. Right. So that's kind of what I mean by the game. Okay. Yeah. Now that makes more sense. When my friend and I were discussing it, I mean, and even in the the book that, that he was reading, he was saying that it's a game like, like you have to, so one of the examples that he used is that they tell you to wait three days before you call after. Oh God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and when he told me that, I was like, hold on. First of all, that makes me angry. If, if, no, just no. <laughs> I've I've called people at 8 a.m. the very next day. Yeah. It was perfectly I, fine. I have no problem texting you the same day and being like, hey, thanks. I had a really great time. That was cool. And text yeah. you again the next day. Like, if you're into me, please don't play games with my emotions like that. That is, that is, and, you do. If you wait three days for me personally, if I were dating right now and you waited three days Three days after we had a good time and good conversation and we got along, I would never speak to you again because you are just trying to play with my emotions. (laughs) And yeah, there's, there's different other techniques that are still being taught today Mm -hmm. that the originators, the creators of all of this have actually disavowed. They're like, stop Mm -hmm. doing it. It's not right. Right. So you had like the freeze out thing. Yeah. (laughs) Jeez. She does something wrong, so you just freeze her out. And now if you've done your work correctly, she will come groveling back to you, and then you're going to allow her back into your life. But she can't do that again. So it's it's like training. I mean, yes. oh my God, no, you don't do that. (laughs) If you've got an issue with somebody, talk about it. Yeah. In your mouth. You don't have to do all this stuff Degrading. in order to get somebody to want to be with you. They want to be with you because you offer them some kind of value. Mm-hmm. You lift them up, leave them better than you found them. Exactly. Their life is better because you're in it, not because you're training them yeah. to be in your life. Yeah. The, the women that I go out with enhance my life. They yeah. aren't my, they aren't my universe. They they raise me up and make me a better person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, as it should be. Yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, I find more success with that type of mentality than I di- ever did with all these techniques that he's reading about. And mm-hmm. I, I think I know the book you're talking about. You probably do. I'm not even going to mention it. And get- I, I keep up with it. That way I can, I can address that stuff when people bring it up to me. Right. But yeah, and it's like, even when I was dating, there was a guy who I dated who specifically outright told me, you know, I I like it when women play hard to get, basically. Um, And I've never been, I never, I never understood that. And so I told him, I was like, you know, that's, that's not me. I don't do that. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't think that dating is a game in that way. I don't have a desire to play hard to get. If I like you and you like me, can we just hang out and be chill? Because that'd be great. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And it's one of those, uh, now I've, I've gone out with some women and they are technically hard to get mm-hmm. because they are corporate CEOs mm-hmm. and they have, uh, I've gone out with actresses. I've gone out with models. These people are in demand, mm-hmm. not, and I'm not talking like in demand, a lot of people coming after them. They're in demand because of their job. Right. And they do have a lot of people that want to go out with them simply because it's going to raise their own social value. Right. If I'm if I'm going out with a model that's on the cover of a magazine, every guy that I run into wants to hang out with me in hopes to meet her. Mm -hmm. So they do have this shield that they put up. And the way that I've found is easy to deal with that is just to let them know. I understand and I can handle the demands that your life puts on you. Mm -hmm. There you go. There, there's the big secret, right? Can I keep up with their lifestyle? Yeah. Am I going to get jealous if they have to go on set and pose in a bikini with this muscle bound bodybuilder 
right. who I am not, am I going to get jealous and blame her for it? No, it's her job. Right. Exactly. And I think in those situations, it's, it's hard to trust people. So if you definitely just come at them at the gate with, Hey, I understand what your job is. I understand what you do for a living. I'm not here to ruin any of that or stop you from doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's also where the whole league thing comes out. Um, they're out of your league. Mm-hmm. Why? I mean, what makes, what makes them so much more special than you? I mean, yeah. you have value. They have value. Mm-hmm. Do the two mesh. Yeah. And, I mean, it's it's not as hard it's not as hard as a lot of people believe it is. You just have to understand why it's that way, and right. then you can map. Then you can navigate through it. Mm-hmm. But you don't have to go up and pretend that I I had a I had a client probably six uh, almost a year ago now. Um, he he went out and rented a Ferrari. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, and he continuously rented this Ferrari. I mean, mm-hmm. It was on his Instagram, it was on his uh, Twitter posts and all this other stuff. He actually met somebody, but he met her under the false pretenses that he mm-hmm. had this life that didn't exist. Right. So he comes running to me. How do I fix this? How long have you been going out with her? Three months. Uh, okay, so let me get this straight. You've been lying to her for three months pretending you've got this lifestyle Mm -hmm. and now you're out of money and you can't, you got two choices. (laughs) Either one, you can move to another country or two, (laughs) be honest with her and hope for the best. Yeah. Thank you. You know, even though, yeah, even though she may like you, you have broken that entire trust thing. You've been lying to her for three months. You don't have a job you had. You don't have the house that you said you had. The car was rented. <laughs> right. Yeah. How do you even keep up a charade like that for three whole months? Like, I don't know. He was spending, I, I think he found someplace where he rented that car for $150 a day. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I for three months, I could have bought that car. <laughs> so, right. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know where his mind was at. <laughs> he came from, he came from one of those pickup artist groups and mm-hmm. yeah if you can flash the cash and pretend this and pretend that mm-hmm. and how he heard about me I'm not exactly sure but he he tracked me down yeah i feel like you're your hitch have you seen that movie um yeah i've seen the movie and actually yeah i do kind of i i, I identify very well with that it's just at the end hitch found out that what he was teaching was really all wrong right <laughs> so, because it wasn't authentic it was yeah. it, well it was more authentic than what the other people were teaching but right yeah. of course yeah I, I do like the movie though and where he's he he's trying to practice what he preaches and it's just not working right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like it too <laughs> it's a funny movie <laughs> and will smith is pretty much like everything so you know yeah. that <laughs> Wow. Yeah. But uh yeah, one some of the manipulation techniques that these people teach, well, like one is the freeze out. Um mm-hmm. another one would be diving deep into a person's past. And there is a psychological thing with this. Mm-hmm. We're asking about their childhood. And what it does is that when somebody remembers something, like if I ask you to remember your couch or describe your couch you get a picture of the couch in your mind and then you describe it. Mm -hmm. So if I ask you what kind of games did you play when you were a little girl and you start describing those games and I start identifying with those, that past memory is now associated temporarily with me. Mm -hmm. So now after 15, 20 minutes or an hour, we're done with the conversation. We're going our separate ways. You now identify, it's like you've known me your whole life. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if we were, especially if I was able to identify specifically with those. It is something that I show, but we teach it from an authentic standpoint. Because if the rest of the conversation doesn't work out, you have to be willing to walk away. 
Now, pickup artists won't won't walk away. Mm-hmm. They will do what they will keep surging forward or charging through. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. You can walk away. But I just want to kind of touch on when I'm talking to somebody, I just kind of want to touch on their uh, past because I'm actually interested in how they came up. Did they have, do they have a good connection with their family? Is there a problem with their family? Some kind of issue that might not work in a relationship with me, Mm -hmm. but that's a common tactic that you will find Mm -hmm. within the pickup artist community. Yeah. So you mentioned the freeze out. We kind of talked about the whole three day rule or whatever. Yeah. And then that one, are there any other like, Big factors that um, kind of look out. There, for? there aren't really big factors. Um, there are like little games. Now, it depends on what system the people are following. Wow. The original system, the the very first system that came out was called the Mystery Method, mm-hmm. and it breaks down the entire courtship interaction. So you have the approach, then you have the comfort section of it where you're now you've you've gone past just the initial talking now you're actually talking to them in a conversation and you're going to escalate into the seduction so every pickup artist almost every single relationship coach out there or matchmaker out there follows this system in one way or another it's always broken right. down into three so inside that comfort zone you there's certain ty- there's certain ways of touching somebody that is not sexual, but it has a sexual undertone. Right. So if you find yourself with somebody and it's things are moving progressing forward very very rapidly, more rapidly than you would normally than it would normally happen, but you're totally comfortable with it, uh, there's a red flag there. That's interesting because it's it's hard to when you feel like you're comfortable it's it's kind of hard to recognize red flags. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's there's ways of touching. There's the and they, it's done very innocently. You would never even know it was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a we call them gambits, so little game bits, and it could be palm reading. It could be the rings on your fingers. I'm going like way, way back. Uh, yeah. So anybody, anybody who's involved in the pick up arts community will recognize this. But um, there was one we called it uh, the pet mouse, where okay, I have a pet mouse. Oh, let me see your hand. And you put the mouse, ma- the imaginary mouse, in the hand. Okay. Now my little my little friends here, they they're kind of they kind of have a mind of their own. All you have to do is just tell them to stop. So if you start tracing up their arm and it's on the, un, it's on the under part of the arm where the nerve endings are very close to the skin. So the under part of your arm is more ticklish than the top. So you would run up and you get to about the elbow. They usually say stop. Mm-hmm. Now at the elbow, that is also a, uh, it's a sensuous zone mm-hmm. because the, the nerve endings are ex- extremely close to the surface. So that triggers those comfort feelings and those pleasure feelings. Wow. Now the next mouse would go a little bit higher. Now the third mouse, uh, oh, I forgot to mention, he's deaf. So now your hand is like up on the shoulder, it's on the neck, and you're able to wrap around the back of the neck and pull him in for a kiss. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i see yeah yeah I, I i feel like i've seen that done somewhere i don't know if they did that in like <laughs> or something like that but i swear i've i've literally heard like the mouse and everything that's crazy <laughs> yeah it, it when it was i forget exactly who first developed it but he was at one of the clubs in los angeles and he told it to us and it it became very popular very fast and anybody mm-hmm. watching it started to copy it, mm-hmm. not understanding what it did. And, yeah. and if, if you don't do it, if, if you don't lead up to it properly, it's going to come off as weird. Uh, it's going to come off as creepy. Yeah, of course. So anybody listening to this, if, 
going to try it, I can almost guarantee it's not going to work because you don't know how to set it up. That's, yeah. that's why I, I picked that specific one. Yeah. 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 But I, I mean, I can attest to having had someone, um, you know, touch my arm gently and, and slowly like that. And it definitely evokes a certain emotion that um, basically is, is correlated with, with some type of trust. Mm-hmm. Which you know is is clearly false, <laughs> right? It's very psychology is such an interesting field. <laughs> I've I've studied a ton of psychology and a ton of sociology and uh, human behavior. Yeah. So a lot of what I do, a lot of what I show, is is based in that. Mm-hmm. Only so that a lot, only so people can understand. So even if they're just coming to us for information. They understand why this stuff works. The only thing that we have done as far as, uh, or myself and Ashley, the only thing we have done as far as the dating world is show people how to, how to enjoy themselves and have their own life and live their life with purpose, mm-hmm. which opens them up, makes them more uh, receptive to other people. Right. And, now, once you once those two meet, okay, instead of waiting three days to make the phone call, how about we move that or get rid, first get rid of that whole thing and then move it to the next morning mm-hmm. or right after the as soon as you drop them off at home mm-hmm. instead of waiting four or five weeks to go out to dinner with them or have them over to your place, you can move that mm-hmm. to two or three weeks out Mm -hmm. and that's it. Take this piece here. Okay. We're going to shove that out to eight months. All right. All we're doing is rearranging what is socially acceptable through different magazines like cosmopolitans, men's health, Maxim magazine, and all this other stuff that's out there Mm -hmm. that people are thinking this is how a relationship works. Uh, I mean, it's like the movies. You meet them, then roll credits. They live happily ever after. That's not real life. Right. And well, and, <clears throat> and real life changes too. Like the times are, are definitely different. I was talking to someone the other day where we were talking about kind of how, um, you know, traditionally nowadays people live together and then get married after the fact. But you know, it wasn't too long ago where people just dated and immediately went to we're married now. Um, And there was no or in between Mm -hmm. figuring each other out. You were just thrown into you're married now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, That that's one of those that we run across as far as some of the problems people have when dating. They are so anxious. it's, It's like on I've, I went out with this girl uh, three weeks ago. And my thing is, I always ask people out f- for coffee or mm-hmm. it's something during the day because mm-hmm. I want the barriers to come down. I don't want this to be like an official date because that artificial comes out. I have to put my best foot forward. I have to act this way. I have to act that way. I, I don't know why we do it, but we do. It's mm-hmm. that first date. And I get Cinderella instead of, uh, or Cinderella at the ball instead of Cinderella <laughs> cleaning out the fireplace. I want right. to see Cinderella clean out the fireplace first. Mm-hmm. So I invite him to lunch. Through the very first thing, she went from date, and in her head, she's already planning how many kids we're going to have. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just how how desperate she she was to meet somebody because she's been single for so long and she's had such a hard time meeting people mm-hmm. and it can't the underlying thing was she had an image problem uh, she didn't see herself as beautiful I mean, she was in in my book she would have easily been like a like a seven mm-hmm. if i was to put it like a number on her i mean she's mm-hmm. a knockout anybody would be lucky to go out with her but people that she was going out with, she was she would just cling 
too hard and want too much. She wants that fairy tale. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when the fairy tale doesn't work, that's when she breaks up with him. Even though they right. could have been the right, the perfect person, he wasn't doing the Prince Charming thing that right. she wanted. Right. Which is wanting something that's also not really authentic anyway, because real life can't have, you can't have a ball every day of the week. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's why I think the, like the divorce rates and things like that are so hard because everybody goes into it expecting a fairy tale or even while they're dating, they have a fairy tale. Um, and then life hits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, or they have this fairy tale that, that they've kind of set the bar there and then something small happens, you know, that, that makes it all kind of unravel and you realize that it's all been a shred, you know, this whole time. Um, and then you obviously can't continue seeing that right. or being with that person because you realize it's a charade. So, yeah. And there's a phenomenon inside of dating and I forget the university that did this study. Um, I want to say it's Walden university mm -hmm. um, where whatever you do, whatever a person does for the first 90 days of a relationship, if it's continuously done, it's expected to that action is then expected the entire relationship. Right. Absolutely. So, and that's why I set the bar so low. Hey, mm -hmm. Would you like to go out for coffee? Okay. There's our first, on a, there's our first quote unquote date mm -hmm. the bar is set really low. And mm -hmm. then from there I can kind of work it up a little, a little by little. And Hey, this is just my authentic self. This is who I am. Would you like to come along for the journey? Mm -hmm. And it, it's a lot better than taking somebody out to a five-star restaurant and right. paying $178 for the meal. Mm -hmm. And okay, now what are you going to do for the second date? How are you going to, how are you going to surpass that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so eventually it, eventually stuff has to come down in order. Now I don't have to worry about going down because I've, I've had dates where are we going? <laughs> we're going to Lowe's. What? <laughs> yeah, we're going to plan out our, we're going, to, we're going to act like we're married and we're going to design our house. It sounds crazy, but they actually have fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would like this. I would like that. So I kind of see what their tastes are. I kind of see where, where they see their life in the future. So yeah, there is more to it than that that I'm looking for, but it gives me insights into them. And at the same time, they're able to see what my tastes are. So if they're looking at like the $8,000 Whirlpool tub, and I'm like, yeah, the, I like that $3,000 one over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's, it's extremely fun because we're like laying out the, what the kitchen floor tile is going to look like. We're, picking out different refrigerators and okay, well, she's extremely functional and, but I like this one that's got the LCD screen in it. <laughs> so, right. But it's one of those, it's, it's unheard of, but it's amazing how much fun and how much you can learn about the other person. Yeah. That's an interesting way to do it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. I would personally, I, I mean, just for me personally, I enjoy going and doing things like taking trips or, um, spontaneity and, and things of that nature. Um, so I would probably like take them canoeing and be like, Hey, let's, uh, let's do this. You're yeah. And, and there is a place for that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm not saying to <laughs> go to Lowe's as your standard, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but I've done things where it was just, Hey, is your, how's the battery life on your, on your phone? And oh, I've got, it's fully charged cool. We're going to go do, we're going to do a, uh, what, what was it? It was a photograph scavenger hunt. Mm. Here's your list. So we go, we go around, we explore the city. People who have lived there, who have lived here their entire life, because I haven't lived here my entire life, but they, they discover parts of the city they never knew existed. Right. Uh, there's, but yeah, you can do, you can do other things like if they're not scared of heights, skydiving. 
um, go take a scuba lesson. I mean, things like that. Yeah. So do you find that doing things like that with the intention of analyzing the other person is, um, so I would kind of feel that that was um, sort of a way that you could be judgmental, especially if the other person is not aware that that's the purpose behind what you're doing. Um, it, it can be viewed that way, but it's really, it's really what I found. It was unintentional that going, because really what I was trying, what I initially set out to do was think outside the box because I don't like the dinner and the movie type dates. Mm -hmm. They have a place, but yeah. for me, uh, going to a movie is the best hour and a half you will have not getting to know the person sitting next to you. Yeah, same. So I kind of cancel those out. And same thing with dinners, because if I order something and it's $15 <clears throat> on the menu, well, she's going to try and come in, come in under that price because apparently I don't have enough money to pay for whatever she wants. So it's kind of like they're they're setting their bar lower than me because they don't want to seem rude. So mm -hmm. dinners are kind of, I kind of cut out the dinners. So what I was looking at trying to do is think outside the box, come be inventive with the dates that I was going on. What I realized after that is that I could, uh, I'm very analytical by nature mm -hmm. that I could actually see where their tastes are. So that kind of happened by accident. It's not, I didn't take them there with the intention of analyzing. Oh, it's okay. just one of those things that I found that I was doing. Right. Okay. They have a very expensive lifestyle expectation. Right. And, but that's what I do in those situations. It, it, like after, when we're leaving the store, like, so what did you learn about me? Mm -hmm. And the question kind of catches them off guard because guys don't ask that. What do you mean? What right. did I learn about you? And it, it just deepens the relationship at that point. Yeah. With the person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's what I do. It's, it's, it can be viewed as manipulation because I am analyzing at the same time that I'm going out with somebody, mm -hmm. but we all do it. It's to just, some degree, right. Yeah, it's just the way that I do it. It, it comes with, because I'm, I know the personality traits that I'm looking for, so I try to go to places that will either bring those traits out and let them relax and be comfortable with me rather than stumbling through for the next six, seven, eight months and we both find out at the end of that time that we're just not compatible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I can understand that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've run into lots of lots of lots of women that I've gone out with, and we get into the we eventually will broach that subject of past relationships, and I I wasted six months of my life on this guy. <laughs> it's like, oh my, yep, been there, done that, and. Mm -hmm. They just don't want to waste any more time, especially the older we get. Right. We really don't want to waste our time on somebody that isn't going to be the person that we're looking for. So you have, you have to identify what type of person do you want. I don't go for looks. Looks are nice, but I'm looking for character. And can you be childlike? Can you drop the ad, adult stuff and just be goofy and stupid with me for five minutes mm -hmm. and forget what every, everybody else says. Right. And oh my God, it is so liberating when people can do that and they find I can do this and nobody's pointing their finger at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was um, a girl in college who did an experiment like that where um, she wanted to see if she carried a stuffed animal around all day, every day to all of her classes and everything for like a week or two or something, if anybody would ever say anything. And nobody ever said anything to her. She did it. Yeah. If they ever said anything to her, they weren't like, oh, you're childish. You don't need that. Or why are you doing that? They didn't even ask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so. and it's yeah, people just re- the grand population just really doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as a whole, that's for sure. Yeah, and if you kind of stop living, stop becoming the person other people expect you to be, it's then you find that you're capable of a lot more than you thought you were capable of because that little voice in your head isn't constantly going off. Right. Yep. Precisely. (laughs) Or um, Gary Vaynerchuk says you just basically stop listening to it altogether because people don't really care. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to do is the courses that we have. That is the hardest part because we're sitting with somebody or we're instructing somebody to go through and deal with those demons and get rid of them. And even for myself dealing with stuff that I've gone through with other people in, in my past, it broke me down to tears. Mm -hmm. Not very manly of a, of a guy to say that, but I broke down and it, it helped me become a better person and because, and to be able to go in front of another person and say, look, I understand you. I want to understand you. I want this to be a relationship of substance mm-hmm. and be able to let you live your life. And I'm willing to come along with the journey with you. Are you willing to do the same with me? Mm-hmm. Without playing the little mouse game and the freeze outs and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. That's just from manipulation. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And using somebody's vulnerabilities to, I mean, as a law enforcement officer, that's what predators do. They find out what your vernal that, and really that it's a predator mentality in this pickup artist community. Mm -hmm. You find out what the vulnerability, vulnerabilities are you identify with those vulnerabilities and then from there you can pretty much do with that person what you want to do with them yeah i feel like you should want to learn about someone's vulnerabilities so that you can help them deal with them if you care for them not yeah. as you want to take advantage of them yeah and going out with people and i find out that they have self esteem issues they have everybody's got body issues yeah and that stuff is set up and it becomes a defense mechanism for them. Oh, yeah. And they're missing out on so much because of those defense mechanisms and because of what other people have told them in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, going out with somebody and then finding out that they were molested as a child is heartbreaking. I mean, it's and it comes out, you just don't expect that. Right. It, but being able to hang out with them and not take advantage of them and show them, look, you can trust me. Mm -hmm. And even though we, we already know from the outset that this is going to be a temporary thing. It's not, it's not really going to be long-term because of uh, the character traits that I'm looking for. I, I know the person that works for me, but when they, we still are friends today. They, uh, she was over three days ago, and we just hung out and talked about the current relationship that she's in. She asked me for a little bit of advice, and we had cooked some dinner. We watched a movie, hug at the end of the night, and, hey, I'll call you and let you know how it worked out. Mm-hmm. And to many people, that sounds strange, but I have a lot of fr- people that I've gone out with that are friends of mine. Mm -hmm. Because I don't treat them like trash. Right. Or like anything other than human beings. (laughs) Yeah. Or what uh, guys can't be friends with girls and hate to prove you wrong, but yes, I can. Right. Positive. Yeah. And there's, there's no romantic interest in there. It's, we're just friends. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on and telling us your story. I think it's very important for everyone to hear. Um, I think you've definitely provided everyone with a lot of things to think about. And I know that you have your own podcast and and website. And um, especially if anybody wants to get a hold of you for any kind of coaching or anything like that, where would they do? Uh, 
Um, well, we have the Girls Ask Guys show. Uh, what we do is we answer a question that people send to us, and it be, that would be the topic of the show. Uh, the website is also girlsaskguysshow.com. But we did just start something where they, if somebody need, wants like an immediate help, we can actually, we will bring them on the show and give them the entire show as a coaching platform. Hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. We can't solve everything, but we might be able to at least point you in the right direction. We're not psychologists. We're not doctors. Right. We just know some stuff. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> Learned a thing or two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, great. Well, that again, that's girlsaskguysshow.com um, so that you can talk to him about the podcast or coaching, whatever you guys need. Um, or if you're more comfortable with um, females, if you're a female yourself, I'm sure that Ashley also probably does the same similar things, correct? Your co host? Yeah. Um, yeah, she is my co host. Um, now, she doesn't come from the pickup artist world. Right. So she doesn't have the amount of training that I have. Of course. But she does she has become a lot more familiar with it she understands it and yeah she wouldn't she would not be my co-host if i was trying anything other than being authentic because she will call me out on it good (laughs) (laughs) so yeah so they can also listen to your show as well i'm sure to get some little bits some helpful things there too so that's great well thank you again i appreciate your time Um, and you coming on and, and sharing with us. Yeah, uh, I greatly appreciate being able to show that there is there are people out there that we're, who are actually trying to help. You have been listening to the Teachable Soul podcast. You can find us on any social media platform, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram as The Teachable Soul, or on Twitter as Teachable Soul. Also, if you'd like to help support the show, you can find us at patreon.com slash The Teachable Soul. You can also visit our website for more information at theteachablesoul.com. 